Hi, everyone. So on today's live video, I will have a very interesting topic. Um, my topic today is on challenges faced by bakers when opening a bakery. Now, this is specifically for bakers who are thinking of maybe starting a home baking business or if you're thinking of starting a bakery shop, a small bakery shop. I just want to share some of the few challenges you need to be aware of when starting. And I'm going to share some of the challenges that I went through when I was starting my business, right? And so my name is Maureen Bilhakamari. This is the Baking for Profit podcast. And I am the founder of Baking with Amari. We share, we offer baking classes, recipe books. Uh, we also have a small bakery called Chiffon Cakes by Amari, a bespoke bakery that only does chiffon cakes. And in this channel, I help small scale bakers with content that's going to help you grow, get clarity in your business, stay motivated and build awareness. So please stick around to the end because I will be sharing a tip for bakers, especially if you're struggling with gaining customers this year. I'm going to be sharing a tip that's definitely going to be helping you stay open especially in a slow economy. So what's the first challenge that you're most likely going to be going through? And even if you're in business, it's like important to be aware of these challenges so you can figure out what to do with them. So the first challenge is scaling up production. Most bakers, what's going to happen is that if you do have a very good idea or you have a good product and you start actually getting demand for the product, what happens is that you actually need to figure out how to make more of the thing, right? You might actually start off with a small mini oven, no mixer, or like a small mixer. And then you find that if you get an order for like three cakes in one day, you're not able to actually bake them all at the same time, right? You have to bake one, wait for it to bake, wait for it to cool. You'll realize because you don't have enough equipment or big enough equipment, You have to do more work during the day, right? So you may start feeling the pressure of needing to produce more per day, right? Uh, And so this is what I would suggest over time, you know, exactly how to get larger equipment just to help you bake over time, right? So you may have started this business as a home baker. You may have started this business as a small bakery shop. You had only the capacity or resources to maybe just do something small, right? Have a medium size or a small size oven. So one of the things you can consider to like over time start getting more equipment or larger equipment is one, if you have a business, please register your business correctly, right? There's a video I did recently where I shared like outdated advice. And one of the things I was telling bakers is you should definitely register a company. Um, So one of the things you can do is register a company and then start a bank account. And this can work whatever region you're in, whichever continent you're in. Um, So if you're in Kenya, please open a a bank account with, you know, a reputable bank. And then start using that bank account, right? Start using the bank account so that um, you can seem like you're actually a busy business, right? Even if it's like, for example, if you're in Kenya, you have a pay bill or a tail number, You can deposit the funds for the people, the till number into the bank account and then go withdraw from the bank. Like this is one of the things I did the first year I was doing business and it builds credit with the bank to the point where they can give you a cash advance or a loan. And this will help you purchase like a small item. Now, don't take big loans yet, but you can start taking a loan to like buy an oven or to buy a mixer. And over time, the same sales that you used to get will actually help you end up paying this loan for you. So build credit with a financial institution so you're able to get some kind of capital, you know, working capital to be able to buy this equipment, especially if your business is consistently getting customers. Another thing you can do is get friendly investors, right? This can be family, friends, a spouse, to fund you so that you can get capital to purchase the equipment. So once you start this business and you've basically tested this business idea and you can tell it's working, the next best thing is to see, can I get somebody who can help me invest in this business, right? So these are the people who help you in the beginning um, to kind of get the business going. So if you can get somebody who can help you just buy a mixer or something like that, especially people who don't want the money back really quickly or who won't ask you for the money back, that's one way of getting this equipment that can help you 
produce more, right? And I can I can say that I've used the first one. I I actually got my first bank loan from bank by actually just putting in the money the first year. And the second one is the same. I've done the same where I've gotten some investors to help me um, buy some equipment or ingredients even to, to get the business going. The third thing you can do, but this depends on, especially if you were employed or you are employed before starting your business, if you're in a group, like a savings group, a Tama or something like that, or you're in a SACO, or possibly you're the kind of person who have a mon money market fund where you're putting money in every month to just kind of save and gain a little bit of interest, you can actually use this to purchase some equipment. Like one of the things I did the first year was that I had some amount in a SACO that I had saved. And I took that money and was able to, to buy me like a bulk purchase of ingredients that helped me go for a couple of months. So that's one of the things you can do if you are employed or if you're in search a, a scenario where you can use a group or some type of savings vehicle or some types of money vehicle to get you to buy equipment or large uh, bulk purchases of ingredients that are going to help your business. So just three ideas of how you can actually um, buy equipment for your business, for your baking business. If you feel that you're getting busy and you really want to increase your production, I know, I think I can think of five to six bakers who are home bakers and they've all gotten bigger ovens and bigger mixers this way right? After a year or two of doing business, they realize, wow, I need to invest in a larger oven, in a larger mixer, in a heavy duty mixer. And, you know, they just kind of use some of the sales from the business and either like a spouse or some kind of group to purchase um, a larger oven or a larger mixer so that they can produce more, which is really helpful over time. Okay. So just a note, we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, make sure you look for Baking for Profit program on Instagram at Baking for Profit on TikTok. Make sure to follow. I share bite-sized information that is really helpful to you. Now, second challenge most bakers will face when they open a baking business, effective marketing and sales to help you grow your baking business. This is a huge one. And I have a whole video, I'm gonna link it, a whole video on exactly how to get started and increase marketing and sales for your baking business so you just keep going. now. You must have or you must learn the skill to effectively market and sell your baked goods consistently because that's the only way you're going to grow your business, right? You need to build a customer base. And especially when it comes to a bakery, you need loyal customers. Um, they're very important in actually your business success. And you need to make sure you have steady sales each month, right? So if you don't have the skills, you need to figure this out and figure out how am I going to actually grow my business by marketing and then over time getting sales into my business. So most bakers who close, majority of the bakers I've met who've closed, had an aspect of not having a consistent marketing plan or consistent sales uh, plan to actually make people get people from leads to actually buy from them. So that's one of the things that you need to perfect. That's one of the skills that I actually decided that I had to learn 100% because I couldn't hire anybody. I, it was just me. So I figured, how can I learn how to do marketing and sales effectively so that I'm able to grow my business and actually build a brand that is consistently bringing in money every quarter, right? So if you're wondering, what do, we, what do you do? I'm going to share what I did that can help you out. And then you can see how you can tweak that and increase or maybe do different things. So the number one thing you wanna do as a home baker or a small bakery shop owner, you need to get clear on your offer. You need to figure out what are your niche products and who needs those products, right? Your target market. If you don't do this, you're not gonna be able to market effectively because selling to everybody is not effective marketing. So you need to figure out, am I a person who's doing custom cakes? Am I a person who's doing budget wedding cakes? Am I focusing on just people who want pastries? You need to figure out what your offer is and what niche products that you're selling. Make sure you test out to make sure there's a demand for those things, right? Don't just make products because you like them. You have to make sure people can actually buy them from you. Once you identify that, ask yourself, who needs these things, right? Is there a market for people who will actually pay me money to buy these things? Once you confirm that, then you know I have this offer. These are my products. These are who needs it. You can create a marketing plan based on that, right? That's a more effective way of doing business when you're small scale instead of trying to sell to everyone. 
So first thing, get clear. Second thing, identify your top five to 10 platforms to use for marketing. In this day and age, I used to tell people two or three. Now I tell you you need to be using five to 10 platforms because it's called omni-channel marketing. You have to market in different places for people to actually possibly think, oh, I can buy from this person. So identify five to 10 platforms to use for marketing that go from free to minimal cost. So uh, it's not exactly free, but minimal cost is like, all you need is, you know, an internet connection and you're good to go in time, right? In time, your time. So identify places where it won't cost you a lot of money to market for your business. Because again, if you're starting a business and you're small scale, if it's expensive to market, you might not last in the business. So can you go online and market your 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 bakery on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you know, YouTube, where can you market your business that's going to create that demand? Other places are also available, like minimal cost could be pop-up markets. It could be, you know, samples. It could be just different things that you can, even if, if it's influence marketing, finding a way to find an influencer who doesn't need a lot of pay to actually start marketing your business. So look for 10, five to 10 platforms you can use to market. Sometimes if you are... A, a, a start uh, a church goer who has a high mark who has um, a capacity for market in the church you can go take your products there are you near a school that will most likely buy from you go check out there are you near a college that maybe is going to be buying from you if that's it, if you have proximity to your target market that's something you can use to market yourself now once you identify those platforms learn how to use those platforms effectively to increase sales and then get those followers, get those people who have heard about your business to actually turn into your clients, right? That's getting leads to turn into your actual clients. So marketing is great, but you also need to learn how to sell to those people, right? Marketing and sales go together and they're not the same thing, right? The next thing, get better at it each month. And the other thing I'd add on to that is tweak each month or each quarter and figure out how to do it better, right? So when I was starting maybe facebook was the biggest thing when instagram became the thing i got into instagram and learned how to market effectively uh, when something like tiktok came i got into tiktok and started trying to figure out how to market effectively you need to make sure not only are you getting better at your marketing but can you keep adopting other newer ways of marketing your business so that it is effective for you so you need to make sure you're doing these things to be able to grow your business. So marketing and sales, major thing. If you don't know how to do it, it's going to be um, a problem. And in case you're a baker who is struggling with social media marketing and you need some serious help, we do have an online class that's a 90-day class, 1,500 shillings for Kenyans, $15. Um, link is going to be linked. There's going to be a link below. You can check it out. And if it's something you need help with, it can definitely help you. Now, the third challenge that bakers will encounter is managing business costs. This is a huge one that I went through and caused me to actually close my business. So home bakers and small bakery shop owners must, this is not optional. If you need to get a partner who works in business with you, who helps you do this, or you need to, again, get the skills, you must be able to cost your products and then price them competitively based on your niche Realize you have to look at the niche and then you cost and price and figure out in this niche, how can I sell? Like, for example, if you're selling bread in a certain area, if you're in Kenya, you know that you cannot sell bread to local people at an extremely high price. It has to be at a certain price. If you're selling a certain type of cake that's in the market, there is usually a price cap on it, right? So when you're doing custom cakes, maybe that's what doesn't have a price cap on it. So you need to look at your niche and then you need to cost and price your products competitively to match your target market. And then you need to do this while you're still covering your daily, weekly, monthly costs. And this can be a challenge the first few years, I would say even the first five years. It is usually a challenge to manage costs, especially when your sales are not very high and you don't have a large amount of capital to start and run your business. So it's usually a game of balance. Can I keep my business going to the next month, to the next month, to the next month? I usually tell people that this is reason. Um, this is the main reason why I closed my first bakery shop because I didn't have enough working capital to keep the business going until I had enough revenue or sales to keep going. Right, and lots of bakers ignore this advice even when I give it. 
and this is out of experience. You don't realize that just starting a business is not enough. Having money just to start the business is not enough. You know, you need different types of capital, right? As I've shared this on Instagram. There's different types of capital. Seed capital, this is the money you need to start and test your, your idea. You need startup capital. This is the money, if you don't have anything, to buy the equipment, to buy the ingredients, the first ingredients to buy some of the equipment. And then you need working capital. This is money that's going to help you go month to month to month buying the ingredients. Um, if you have somebody you've hired, paying the person, buying the internet, the soap, everything you need to run your business. That's working capital. So most of us, when we start, we'll focus on the seed capital and the startup capital. We won't look at the working capital at all. And the problem with that is that your business can not go for long if you don't have working capital. You will close. I, I know this by experience. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you have all the capital you need. Or if you don't have that, maybe start a home bakery and then tell yourself you'll move slowly, but at least I'll take it every month. Um, I'll take it each month, right? So most reason, uh, the biggest reason most bakers close, especially if you open a shop, is because number one, you didn't cost and price accurately. And then number two, you didn't have enough working capital, right? And even when it comes to home bakers, they don't cost and price accurately. They just figure, I just need to put in the ingredients and that's it. If you're looking at this more than an, okay, if you're running an expensive hobby, that's okay. You don't have to cost and price. If you know you're going to do this for a bit and go do something else, that's okay. However, if you're telling yourself, I'm a small, I'm a home baker and I'm going to do this and continue growing my business, you need to change the way you're operating because you need to make sure at least you cost and price accurately so you're selling this at some kind of profit or at least you're breaking even. So if you do not know how to cost and price, please figure out how to cost and price. Get a baker who can help you. We have a cake pricing formula bundle that's an ebook, a video, and a spreadsheet with formulas to help you do that. It's $2 or 200 shillings. You can check the link below. But get help on how to cost and price so you can figure out exactly what it is that I need to do to sell profitably, right? If you're getting any value from this, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Number four challenge that most bakers will go through is market saturation. There is high competition. Now, specifically, when I look at where I'm at, which is Nairobi, Kenya, there is a huge amount of competition. Lots of people are getting into the baking industry because it's starting to look like a lucrative business. But I will say everywhere in the world, baking does tend to be a more low entry um, type of business, especially when it comes to small scale. So you'll find a lot of people are baking, right? They're baking from home or they have small bakery shops. So when an industry grows, people can see people, there is, you know, there is that advantage where I can actually make money. It's lucrative. A lot of people enter the market. This forces bakery owners to find a differentiator. What makes you different from baker a and baker b and you're all in one area you're 10 bakers and you're all trying to sell to the same person so you need to figure out what is the difference between me and the other baker right how is my business unique from another person's business and so this tends to be a main reason why most bakers don't stay open because there's just so much competition in the industry um having a good product is important but it's not the answer to actually staying in the market right in a success in a successful in a very competitive market, if you want to be successful, your product has to be good, but something else has to be there. You have to figure out what sets you apart from everybody else so that people come to you specifically, right? What sets you apart from the other bakers? So one of the things you can do is build a unique brand that is different from another brand that's selling the same exact thing, right? Ensuring you have a unique customer experience for your customers so that they can keep coming back to you. It could be different things. It doesn't have to be the same thing. It could be just your brand, the type of brand you have, how you interact with your customers. It could be your packaging. It could be if you have a shop, it could be the way the shop looks like. It could be how you treat your customers when they enter your shop. Maybe after sales service, how do you deal with your clients afterwards? Are they happy about that? What kind of support do you offer your clients? Maybe the delivery, how you deliver to your clients, that could be it. You need to figure out what makes your business different than others. Some of them, like a good example of an international brand is Starbucks. It's 
the the loyalty of the brand and kind of like they have a loyalty program that sets them apart from other people. So you need to figure out what am I going to do different from other people so that people can keep coming back to me because I offer a specific experience for them as, as opposed to other bakers. So and especially now because a lot of people, a lot of people are just getting into the baking industry. There's a lot of home bakers who are selling the same exact thing and a lot of people undercutting when it comes to price so that they can get the customers. So you need to figure out how can I be different other than just product and sometimes just pricing. How can I be different from other people so that people keep coming back to me and buying from me? So here's a tip for this that I would suggest. One of the things that kind of worked for me is when you're starting, take the word niche very seriously. Or even now, if you want to get serious, take the word niche very seriously, especially if you're a small scale baker. If you do, if you do not have a large amount of capital, you don't have like you know, a hundred employees plus your small scale baker. And that means you need to figure out what your niche is in an extremely competitive market. Niche does help you out, right? Starting a business that's going to serve everyone is not going to last long. Most of the time it's going to lead to failure. So pick a niche, pick a segment of the market where you can grow in that segment and be known for those type of products, that type of service and that type of brand then as you grow your business and you become a medium to large enterprise, you can then start niching out and incorporating other niche segments. But when you're getting started, start in one segment and be known specifically in that segment by those customers. That's going to grow your loyalty base. And then it's going to have more and more people coming to your business over time, right? So start by niching out, perfect your niche, get those customers, and then you can grow at your business and, and that. And especially if we're in a slow, especially now, we're in a slow economy. If this is happening to you, please, I'm always telling people about my Amari SOS strategy. This is a small offer strategy. If you have main products you sell to people, for example, if you do wedding cakes, if you do uh, custom cakes, if you're doing celebration cakes, create mini offers or smaller versions of your product Targeting the same target market, I didn't say create small products and sell them cheap. No. Create smaller versions of your product, target the same target market you have right now, and get them to buy more from you daily. It is harder, like let's say somebody likes buying a custom cake from you, a 3kg custom cake, for birthdays. Now, if they don't have a birthday the whole year, they're never going to buy. They're only going to buy from you once or twice a year. So remember, you want to increase the likelihood of your customer coming back to you over and over. So ask yourself, what can I create that a customer can buy from me every month? They will buy the extra cakes on top, but what else can they buy from me every month? So if I sell celebration cakes, one very simple thing I can do is start offering a box of six or a box of 12 cupcakes, or I can start offering brownies, or I can start offering cakesicles or a treat box. Have a smaller offer that's a little bit more cheaper that's going to be Something that somebody can look and go like, wow, I can buy for my kids every month or I can buy for myself as a snack every week. What is the thing that you can do that can get people to buy from you in a consistent way? That's going to increase your revenue and it's going to make sure that your customers are buying a little bit more from you over time. So consider having a small offer strategy, especially now in this slow economy. It's really going to help you out. Now, the fifth challenge that most bakers will go through, especially if you have a small bakery shop, is government regulation. Now, this depends on the size of your business, the location and the employees. Like, for example, do you have it in an urban place? Do you have five to 10 employees? Is it 15 employees? How big is the space you have? All that. So there's different regulations based on the type of bakery you have, how big it is, and how many employees are working in that. The other thing can be location. Different counties and regions and countries have different rules and laws on that. Also niche. There's some niche that are more regulated, like in, in, in Kenya, the bread segment is more regulated than the cake segment. So th this means that your bread has to be a certain weight and you have to be packaging a certain way. You have to be regulated in terms of the packaging you're using, that kind of thing. Most of you know that it, um, plastic packaging in Kenya is basically banned. For you to use it, you have to get a certain license to be able to use it. So realize some segments are more regulated than others, right? So you need to figure out, know the law, know the regulations, 
and then do your best to comply in every way. So like, for example, when I was opening, one of the things I did is I made sure I had a permit. I made sure all of us who were working there had health certificates, all that. So most bakers who start bakery businesses and then they ignore the legal side. I have heard of bakers who, you know, their equipment was confiscated and they had to close business because they didn't have any compliance at all. So instead of ignoring it, my advice for you is don't ignore it or, and don't run away from it. Go to the government office and figure out what am I supposed to have. Go online these days. They tell you what to do. Go on ecitizen.go.ke if you're Kenyan. Figure out what should I do for my type of business in my location to be compliant. And this means opening a business or your business as an entity. Number two, you need a permit to run the business and all the other things. So I tell you, the more you grow, especially, the more it becomes an issue. So if you don't deal with it, it's going to be an issue for you. And especially the more in public you are, if you have a shop, the people are going to walk in and they're going to, you know, ask you for these things. And even if I know a lot of Kenyans like to bribe their way through it, it becomes a very expensive exercise. The best thing is to just go get the permits and the compliance, have them there. So when somebody walks in, they can they can see them and that's it, right? They'll even stop harassing you. So if you can find out what the government requires of you, depending on whatever it is, you are a home baker or a small bakery shop owner, and then do what you need to do to make sure that it's working out for you. Now, it's a bit easier if you're a home baker, especially in Kenya. You don't have to worry too much about it. But if you want to grow your business, I would start telling you to figure out exactly what to do to, um, to actually get moving and make sure you are compliant over time. You don't have to move very fast. You can go slowly over time and just be compliant. But start now so it doesn't become an issue later on. If you have any questions on that, please do comment below. And let me know in the challenges. <clears throat> I hope this has helped you. Do comment below if you're going through any of these challenges. If you have an extra challenge you have that you want to comment below, maybe I might make some content on it. If you comment below, I can definitely help you out. Um, do let me know if the tips have also helped you. If you like this, like and subscribe to this channel. Watch the next video where I talk about how to start a cake business. And this is a step-by-step. -step. It's a very step-by-step -step in in-depth guide on exactly how to get started. Um, you can just check it out and I hope it helps you. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.